Good afternoon from Yami B TV. Wishing you all well, sending special love to you per usual. Now I'm going to another couple of a selection of videos of different types today, but uh, the majority of you that watch Yami B TV, you love this kind of stuff. Now it's fair to say that during that life that I led in those institutions, um, we could describe Uncle Yami. It's been described um, a, a bit part in force sometimes when. You know, drugs are being sold on wings by the hierarchy or people that believe they hold the power because they've got all the contraband uh, that people want. And, you know, there's a market for it, but there's also going to be people who, a bit like me, um, that won't want to pay for what they've bought. And in the time frame that's given, like uh, you say, all right, I'll take five of them and I'll give you that back Friday and you don't give it back now. Sadly, one of my mottos, for all the wrong reasons, was not so much when I was outside, but when I was in prison, I always believed, ooh, I'm not paying for that, because it's like paying for something, it's like paying for your death, really, Russian roulette, you're buying drugs or taking drugs off people, but you're basically paying to harm yourself, but it's not a reasonable um, way of thinking, because, you know, you can come, become seriously unstuck in there and get seriously hurt for not paying your debt. A lot of big egos, some people need their money for the real reasons of their dinner and um, it's getting money outside to carry on with their business inside, to pay the bills outside or support their families outside for whatever reasons. Um, on many, many occasions, I was asked to escort people, um, criminals to the gym, exercise, mosque education when they might have a bit of trouble when they come for me in the morning and say yami listen can you follow me down there because they're expecting trouble and bringing yami there maybe you know I'm, I'm i've got a good name for say completing the missions uh that have been asked for me so i'm reliable in that way but you know it comes at a price or it came at a price with me that i would have to get what i want out of out of it as well now Two stories coming up here of very different types, one inside and one outside. So we'll start with the one inside. Now, during this time, this is the B-Cat run in the 90s. I think Ziggy Zaggy, you was there at Nick's round about this time, right? And, you know, a uh, bad phase for me. Um, in debt, you know, there's three or four or five people that I promised that I would give back stuff to and I didn't and I wasn't really, really caring about it. I knew that, you know, it could bring real serious um, repercussions by way of violence to me. But again, I wasn't really caring at that stage. Now, <clears throat> many times some of these same men would ask me to go and collect stuff of people that owe them money. And I had a specific way of doing it, not so much walking through the door, pushing out my chest and saying, listen, you owe what's his name money, you, you make sure that you get that paid or else. Like, I was more subtle, like, walking in because I know that, you know, I'm, who, who am I to judge when I commit the same kind of behaviour as the same men that I'm confronting around debt and stuff like that. So um, I would walk in and sit down on the bed and say, listen, what are you going to do about you know, owing that money in there, you know, that it could bring a few problems. And depending on the attitude that they take, I don't care about him, he can't do nothing to me. Ah, oh, is it, Yami? Yeah, no, nah, I'm going to sort it all out, man. I said, well, you, you got a day, you know, do it in the politest way possible. Sometimes it isn't possible uh, to get the right reaction out of people when you're bringing that kind of stuff to their doorstep, you know, challenging, confronting, um, blah, 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 blah. On such occasion, Right, there's a few that are watching me now that have been with me during this kind of stuff as well. Now there was a guy called Ajipon. Now, dark, very, very big, built, muscly. But I used to watch him. Right, I've had a couple of run-ins. He he takes the gear right as well, and um, he. Well, I've, I've had a couple of run-ins verbally with him, but I always looked at the way that he trained and you know the way that he carries himself, like pushing himself. He always reminded me of someone that could, you know, act more than what he was. So whether I, I got it right or I saw straight through it and, and that kind of stuff. Now, I never believed his training. I didn't think he was physically, physically supreme. Not that it really matters, but I also noticed that in a couple of times I saw him fight, he was more of a wrestler without trying to fight with his hands. So I had that in the back of my mind as well. On one such uh, morning, he turns up at my door 
and comes through the door and says, yeah, maybe. I said to him, yeah, what's up, mate? He said, yeah, you know what I mean? Uh, what's his name um, saying? He's called Mickey H, right? He's doing life. I'm a serious geezer as well. I was surprised that he didn't come and confront me himself and ask me rather than sending someone like that to confront me, obviously maybe not expecting the answer that I was going to give, right? But I took it as a personal affront when he turned around and said to me, yeah, you owe blah, blah, blah. Listen, you got till Friday to pay it otherwise or, or else. Hold on. In my mind, straight away, I'm thinking, who are you talking to? Like kind of thing, you're turning up on my doorstep. I'm thinking I've got to send out a warning there, send him, send him packing with his bags all the way back to where he come from, um, whatever. But before I had time to think about it, I was kind of pissed off that morning anyway. You knew how it was for me sometimes. I, re I left two le straight, left and right. So I walk, a hook and up a car is on the bed, right? This guy's as bigger than me as well, but we knew that I was strong. He was cut, curled up on a bed. It was a pitiful uh, figure. I expected a better fight than that, right? I said, listen, you go down and tell him that I will sort it out for him, but don't be sending people up here to come and try the, the strong arm tactic. I mean, who am I to talk using that tactic myself on doing, but I was surprised that Ajipon would be thinking that he could come and, 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 and bring my game, the way that I do things, to my doorstep, right? I weighed him in, I levered him, right? We'd, we'd let him get back up, clean back up. Go, go down and you tell him that, right? So later on, obviously, Mickey H says, yeah, yeah, I mean, I didn't mean it for him to come through the door. Basically, I was going through my list. He explained it that way, but I didn't buy it. Now, many times along the years, like um, Too Fresh and You 112 always says, yeah, I mean, where's more of the landing stuff? And there's loads, isn't it? Because I saw that a lot in life and I'm going to get round to major upsets of big name criminals and later on I'm going to do um, the big name um, criminals that couldn't really have it with their hands how do they fear do, do, does their power thing with their money prestige and their big reputations from the out does it count for anything in a prison environment where um, you know some men are thinking oh, I don't care what it is with you and all that I'll weigh you in and take your things off you wouldn't have happened to many big names that I knew uh, but some most of those um, big name figures from all around the country that I've spoken about um, don't really drug deal and that kind of stuff anyway. Um, but you wouldn't be able to talk bad to them or rough to them without, and they wouldn't be um, relying on anyone to do the dirty work for them. You know what I mean? So I've seen it over the years where people go and act tough and go and try and put it on someone where they think it's going to be an easy thing. And it doesn't really work. And I'm always of the belief that, you know, you, people sending people to do dirty work when uh, my method of going through the door and being on my P's and Q's, because I came unstuck, not in a bad way, but I learned from history and in the early days of my institution of stage, never walk through someone's door and underestimate anyone. You know, we've had a couple of stories where I, it came unstuck for me and I got back into it on some of those stories that we've spoken about on Yami B TV. But it really reminded me of a time when I was out. I had a girlfriend, right? Long term now. I'm not going to go into to too much detail who she is because it, it was uh, probably one of my deepest relationships as a kind of young upstart in the 20s and all that. I'd already done Ellsbury by that, that time, the Ellsbury prison. So, um, and I was up to my no good, my crimes at that stage. Now, during relationships sometimes, especially at that age, um, the tit for tat arguments and, um, you know, you're this and that and that. Now, many times over the years, and a lot of men, I think, will be able to vouch for it, where women or your girlfriend are saying, yeah, you don't run off your mouth with me, you're a wanker, you're not all that anyway. I'll get what's his name onto you, right? But during such heated arguments, me being the wind up merchant I am, I'll say, yeah, you go and get him, he's nothing to me. I'll never go with him, but I wasn't uh, as strong as I would become a couple, three, four years of mentally, you know, changing round about this time. But I could always throw a, a good few punches. We knew that from the early days of Ellsby growing up. We knew that I could look after myself, right? 
So when I was giving her the big talk that night, I was like, yeah, you bring anyone you want, man. You're thinking because them lot are from Brixton and this, these ones are from Peckham and that one's from East London. You think that because I, I, I she, because obviously she books me as a little sweet boy who, who can have it, but he's, he's more mouth and I can, you know, I reckon that I could get someone, he'll be scared to fight him. I'll get him boyed off or mugged off. Exactly what she did now. When I called it, said to her, don't, you, you know, call whoever you want. Little did I know, a day or two later, she calls a geezer for me. Now, he's big, right? Oh, but I say he looked like he had three heads and he was built naturally, like a thing. And me being out for a, a couple of months at that time was slim and whatever and that. We know that I always had bottle. Now, I'm at the curtain, I'm in my bedroom and oh, I, I get um, stones are being thrown at my window. They haven't knocked on my front door, right? So I look down. I see my girlfriend, right, with two other girls and a geezer. Summer's, summer's day, glasses on, they're all leaning on the car and all, yeah, come down here now, mouth almighty. Da, 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 da. So I, I look to the right, I look to the left, there's another two cars and there's and that big geezer comes out of one of them and is, is saying, yeah, pussy, come down, yeah, yeah, come down. And, and, wow. So you got the whole balcony out, right, watching. My neighbours as well, like, which I got on with. Uh, but they witnessed all this as well, right? So I went, I went, sorry. I went down. I said, so I'm a bit scared at first, thinking, fucking hell, look at the size of him, mate. Oh, but then something dawned on me. I said, you know what? I ain't going to let you, I ain't going to let you boy me off. And I'm not going to um, be a shrinking violet in front of you. Um, so for whatever reasons, right? So I'm thinking, damn, I mean, go out there, man. Be brave and go and, have a, go and show him. So I kind of got mad about the situation that you dare bring anyone for me. So I come out, a couple of the neighbours have come out and said, Sammy, what's going on? I go, don't, don't, don't worry. I'm going, all you've got to do is just watch my back so nobody else don't join in. Gone downstairs. He starts walking towards me. They're all swaggering and standing up there, girls and boys, right? So he walks up to me, he said, yeah, well, you, yeah, I heard you calling saying that you're, I, you, you, I'm not, you'd have it with me and like that kind of stuff. Before you could finish the sentence, I went rat, rat a tat tat tat. I threw uh, a flurry, right? And I've got left crossed. In, I got everything spot on in the space of say 45 seconds with everyone watching. But I was a little bit blind. I wasn't fully focused. But I just let off the artillery and hope for the best, right? When I looked, he was like, there's, when you look at the, the flat windows, there's little garden things outside people's houses. Not so much a back garden, but at the front um, before you come into their, their, their front doors, right? So the fight is going through and it reaches that bit there. But before I knew it, I couldn't see him. I was thinking, where's he got him? But he was on the floor. He was in the bushes with all the nettles on his face, scratching up all his face, right? So I was hitting him, right? Really flowing all that. But I could hear sirens. So obviously the neighbours, somebody's called the police or whatever. Um, and, and, and they're shouting me, a couple of them, right? a couple of good old friends as well, saying, Sammy, get out of here. The police are coming, man. You don't need all this. Just get out. So what I did is I... I got, I left him on the floor, and as I started walking away, you could, there was blood all coming down his face and everything, right? I was surprised at the damage. Now, as we reached the stairs, because I'm thinking, that I'm kind of gassed now, you know how cheeky Uncle Yami was, right? So I'm, I'm looking, I go, ah, you see? People sending you down to fight me, and you're expecting, she's told you I'm a sweet boy, and I'm a wanker, and I'm a mug, and you're just coming down off the back of that, and thinking that, right? So, the other geezer that's come down to get me, to take me away, because the sirens were getting closer and closer. He's saying, Yami, come, come, Sammy, come, man, come. But as I was walking away, he'd done a real muggy thing. Like, it wasn't even a, like a punch, right? It was a bit of, I wasn't saying too much, right? So he, he threw his hand down from a punch up there. I don't even know if he had a weapon or something, but it felt like I was being scraped. And it, it something touched me, but 
It's like a little scratch of blood. And, and, and then Eddie said to me, he said, yeah, you're bleeding a little bit. But I didn't feel a punch. So I was thinking, ah, I said, is that the best you got? So then I legged it, got away, and I didn't get nicks or nothing like that. And I ended up getting back, back with her, you know, after that. Very dangerous when partners can are prepared through hell have no fury for a woman scorn and you'll bring somebody down to possibly kill me and that. And me and you were meant to be in love. Um, that kind of thing, right? But forever in the day, every time we had an argument, me and her, I said, yeah, bring, I said, bring her, man. Anyone you bring, I'll knock out and do overdoing it and over exaggerating uh, because it was a brilliant performance by me, right? That day. And many, there's other upsets as well in my early days. And I noticed again, the, the, when, I, when I'm the underdog or where it looks like I'm, I might not win or whatever, I seem to find a way during those ones. When the little ones, I didn't really try that. You get what I mean anyway, but I'll finish. There's too much talking. Um, but I'm coming up in a minute um, with a Palmer one. But um, sending special love to you uh, on this Monday afternoon.